what, what I wanted to do today is, is to focus on an aspect of ag recovery um, which is about um, enhancing market access for New Zealand farmers, which is something that we probably didn't expect when we began, but is becoming a quite a strong strategic driver for this activity. Um, just briefly about 3R, which I'm the also executive director of, we uh, design and manage product stewardship programs. So not only do we manage ag recovery, but it's also about paint stewardship and um, we're designing a program for end of life tyres involved in the motor industry, working in electronics. Um, these have common elements to them, um, all of these stewardship programs. They, they require a chain of custody of the materials, they require an auditable trail of what happens to those materials, and they require evidencing through the supply chain of the activity, uh, all to a international standard of some sort. So in our case we have ISO 14001, and that translates across the programs. The other thing that they require is a stitching together of collaborations in, this, in the supply chain of stakeholders. So it doesn't matter what the product is, the core issues, if you like, or the core elements are the same. Um, the Minister this morning talked about um, paddock to plate, and in New Zealand it's more, um, we talk about farm to fork, but it's the same thing um, about the whole of the supply chain being involved in the process. Um, so I want to, uh, ex uh, if you like, set ag recovery in context, and then explain briefly the programs um, and their direction and then focus on what we do to support market access for New Zealand farmers. So we, we've got this you know, clean green uh, image in New Zealand and 100% pure and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, in our marketplace, this is increasingly the message for us, which is clean green, prove it. So increasingly consumers and those that represent them are becoming um, sceptical about where their food comes from uh, and those things that are associated with it. So this is a driver. I'll get the right way in a minute. So um, Ag Recovery was born in 2006 and it's a charitable trust uh, and its uh, intention was to address persistent wastes in agriculture. So had a broader brief at the beginning. It started in containers, as I'll show you, but it is moving on from uh, where it began to address persistent wastes in agriculture, and that is a fascinating breadth of issues. It's a not-for-profit charitable trust. Um, it's an industry good process, and I suppose the trustees reflect that New Zealand's agriculture is a bit different from Australia's. Um, it's um, predominantly pastoral, so um, the, the human beings are outnumbered by sheep, beef, um, dairy, deer, um, and so the, uh, there is some horticulture but there's only modest levels of broad acre, and so the mix, if you like, is different. And the stakeholders represent um, local government, not dissimilar to the, some of the stakeholders that are around the table for Ag Stewardship Australia. It's a place to find common ground, um, and I think as the programs grow in complexity, uh, the governance might change, the delivery models will certainly change over time. And as I said before, it started about being wa about waste, and now it's increasingly more about supporting the supply chain. So there are five programs currently operating, uh, one in containers, one in drum recovery, which is larger scale containers, one for chemical retraction of uh, obsolete stocks, old chemicals, uh, wrap recycling, and crop protection net. And you'll see their programs in development include reflective mulch, CCA timber, um, that's, that's prominently posts in horticulture, um, waste oil containers, irrigation tubing, um, I could add to that um, the, the sleeves that go inside milking cups on dairy milking platforms. Um, essentially what happens is when we solve one, the farmers say, what about this? So 
said I'd get it right eventually. So in the container model, that was the one that was started first. It's a levy funded model. Started with 12 brand owners back in 2007 when it hit the start line. It now has 56. Uh, 70 collection centres, they started in local government. Uh, transfer stations, now they're predominantly in rural retail. Um, and it's free for farmers and growers, but effectively they pay for it in the levy that, uh, that goes on the product at the front. Very similar to drum muster. And we learned a lot from Drummaster. And there's a certified safe end use in New Zealand, and it's essentially underground cable cover. Drums is uh, a, a fully funded model. It's, um, I won't get you, you into the, uh, the complexity of this model, but it's not just simply a levy on containers. It depends on what the status of the brand owner is and whether they want the drum back or not. There's a, a mixed model of the way it's funded and the way it's done depending on the needs of the particular brand owner concerned. The chemicals is a, is a national program. I could spend about two hours explaining how it's funded. It's bloody complicated um, because um, this is a voluntary program. And so essentially we have two types of chemical coming back. One which is funded by the uh, brand owners that are in the container program to a capped level and all of the rest. And all of the rest might be funded by a combination of user pays, local government, central government, you name it, wherever we can find the resource in order to get the job done. And New Zealand has no uh, onshore capability to process the more difficult material, so that goes all the way to France at enormous cost. Silage wrap recycling is uh, a, um, a user pays process. Uh, we're currently shipping this material offshore. There's at least 10 times as much silage wrap alone as there are, in terms of tonnage, as there are chemical containers. And that's just in silage wrap. It's not on all the other mulch films. So in terms of volume of material, this waste um, is very large in relation to containers. Maybe I, I'm a really slow learner here. <laughs> um, and, and NET is, again, a user pays process. And farmers who are motivated to do this process uh, will pay. So what I want to focus on now, really, is this part about the supply chain. Essentially, we have relationships across the supply chain, either with, so in the case of Assure Quality, that's a government-owned um, largest auditor of farms in New Zealand. Um, Silver Fern Farms is a meat processor. Um, Western Milk is one of the dairy companies in New Zealand. So it's examples of um, different parts of the supply chain. And you'll see those logos for those of you who can train spot. There's a number of organisations um, that we work with. The point here is that we have NZ Gap uh, in New Zealand, um, and we have a number of uh, processes around farmers being required to be approved handlers, um, and this fits in with that process. And, you know, what do you do with the container when it's finished? So smart member services, just from a, um, a, a farmer perspective, um, all farmers are members of AgRecovery. They get a card, they get key tags that are on their ute, uh, and when they either approach us through the 0800 number or whatever, they've got a membership number, and all of the information and relationship with that farmer is captured into what we call uh, smart member services or SMEs. For the geeks among you, um, this is a, just a few slides of um, how it works, but it's essentially um, we purchased a customer relationship management system off the shelf that kind of gives you all of the usual grunt of mail out, etc., and holding the main base of information, and then we developed a piece of software which is hosted off-site into which uh, all of the data around the relationship with the farmer goes, and then the farmer can access that or approved parties, whoever that may be. 
and so that, so that they get a record of their user activity. And that is then linked to supply chain databases. So here's an example where um, if you're a sheep farmer and you're supplying chilled lamb um, through Silver Fern Farms, the meat processor, to Marks and Spencer, well, um, and that process is audited by Assure Quality, then we have a, a, a linkage so that the Assure Quality auditor already knows that their Ag Recovery member, what their um, record of compliance is, they can uh, help them to tick the box, and that evidence can go all the way up the supply chain, farm to fork. And that just, um, I guess, describes it again in the same kind of way. It's about the auditable trail. And here's just a couple of um, notes from uh, successful parties, if you like, farmers who see it as an integral part of their work. What, what I found interesting this morning in the, um, in the economic presentation was talking about the middle income or the growth in um, medium scale wealth around the world. And the forecasts say that um, those middle income earners are 400 million and by 2050 they'll be 1.2 billion. And of course all of us are trying to pitch for premium markets. A and I guess the message that I'm bringing, for us at least, is that um, this is not just about a kind of a nice to have, it's actually about the ticket to play. It's about uh, getting access in the first place because those people who want premiums also want scrutiny of the way the product is made and delivered. Thank you very much.